Kobe, thank you for talking to me. Can you tell me why marriage equality here in Australia is so important to you? Uh, marriage equality is important to me, not just for the fact of marriage. Um, growing up in Australia, it's uh, very important that we knock out homophobia um, and we make uh, we put things out there so people can get used to who we are. Um, we are here and we're not going away, but we're not any different from anyone else. Um, when you tell someone they're not equal under law, um, that stigma flows on into the community and it has. Um, and so our leaders have to show some, some conviction and leadership. And if they allow marriage equality, that stigma will follow on and there is a snowball effect that will follow and people will see that it is that it's not so bad to be gay and it's not a dirty thing it's not and the stigma is getting smashed already but it's still there very much so we've got a lot of transphobia biphobia and homophobia especially in regional and rural australia what's your and, sorry carry on go what's your involvement so far in the campaign for equal marriage uh well when i first started for equal i remember going to my first equal love rally in melbourne at federation square and then I got involved with that. Um, I'm very, I, I was very, very kind of shocked almost that we didn't have the same rights um, as everyone else. And then, so I seen, I seen that someone was doing something and I went along and being me, I had to get involved. <laughs> and then um, about a year later, I took it to my hometown in Ballarat and formed regional no discretion, which um, we had a first rally on Valentine's Day in 2010. What was the rally like? Was um, it attended? was massive. It was massive. Um, it was probably the best and most proudest rally I've ever been to. Um, just to see the young people of Ballarat come out, be proud. We gave them a platform and that's all they needed to do to come out there and speak. And um, after the rally stopped, no one wanted to stop protesting. They were outside of the signs with signs going honk if you support gay marriage getting toots and there's hecklers and but they're still going they're like ah and with that fought back and then at the after party people were talking and then a group formed a social group and then uh, from that social group a gay night was born um dorothy who um at hyder bar and then a lot more acceptance have come you know it's been and it has snowballed in ballarat and that rally i'll never forget it like uh, and my mum spoke at that rally and I got to hear things from my mum when she was speaking to other people that she probably couldn't speak to me directly, but she said a lot of things that really made me proud to be me and who I am. So has your family been very supportive? Um, yeah, um, my family is very supportive of me. I'm lucky in the sense that um, my mum's family is Indigenous and Indigenous people, there's not very much homophobia. I think some people think they're homophobic, but they're not. Um, like traditionally, a lot of Aboriginal nations call uh, the uh, gay people um, two spirits, and they believe that we've got two spirits in one body, and that's a beautiful thing and divine, and we're here to help because um, we have got the masculinity, but yet the femininity, and that eliminates ego and arrogance, and it gives us a chance to open up and listen and create conversation. What do you think of that perception that some Indigenous Australians are anti-marriage equality? There's that boxer Anthony Mandin, Mandin yeah. who has spoken out against it. How do you feel when people misrepresent your own views? It really hurts. It really, really hurts. And especially Anthony Mundine, he really needs to pull up him and his uncle, you know, sometimes um, because they're not representing the truth. Um, and he's talking about assimilation and colonization, but homophobia is a product of colonization here in Australia. Before colonisation, we had no homophobia. People could live the way they want. We've got sister girls, and up north, there's sister girl island for transgender women where they can go and learn to be the woman they are, you know, the men they are, you know? Why do you feel Australian politicians have been so slow to come on board in support? Um, why do I feel they've been so slow? Oh, God, I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I knew. I think. Um, Ego and arrogance, like I was talking about before, um, uh, it's, there's a lot of masculinity and there's a lot of, and it's the same with accepting what's did our history with Indigenous people, there's too much ego, it's close to home, and Kevin Rudd kind of took a turn when he got back into Prime Ministership of being, who's the nastier, and everyone's been trying to prove their masculinity and arrogance and toughness, but really, they're... And then when they get out of power, they come on board because they actually believe in it. 
but they're just being puppets. And I think they're just scared of a really powerful minority who are good at what they're doing and they're just bowing down and almost bending over, you know. Why do you think so many Australian politicians are coming on board now? We've had the Greens for quite a while, um, people in the LP have come forward, even people in the Nationals and Liberals, the Coalition, are now supportive of marriage equality. Because we're right. <laughs> And we're, we're right, and they realise that if they don't, um, people are going to look back at, on them and they're going to look back and see they're on the wrong side of the history. Now, unfortunately, some good prime ministers who have done some um, good stuff are going to be seen bad because they were slow to come on board. They didn't show conviction. They didn't have that um, leadership quality quite that Australia needs. And we haven't had a good prime minister, actually, that has that leadership for quite some time, and not in my lifetime. Um, and it will take femininity and less ego to get that. Um, and I think it all comes down to ego and arrogance. Um, and the fact that it makes people feel better to be better to, better than someone else. Uh, and why do you think the polls consistently show that the majority of voters support marriage equality compared to previous years when it was often the minority? Well, I remember when I first started, um, what a lot of people told me that it was never going to happen and it won't get anywhere. But um, as I said, we are right and we're on the right side of history. Like, who can say that our love is any less than anyone else's love? A heart is a heart, it bleeds, it, it's, like, it's gender neutral. Um, and I think we're seeing a shift only because um, our younger generation are coming up and they're thinking. Like, I thought, I was shocked that I didn't have those rights. I was shocked in my lifetime I could have put, been put in a mental asylum. But the younger generation are thinking, what the hell? Like, when Aboriginal people couldn't marry white people, people look back at that and they think, are you serious? But it was facts. We're going to have a plebiscite, or at least that's what we're supposed to be having. <sighs> Where do you stand on that? Ah, uh, scrap the plebiscite. Um, coming from a regional area, I grew up in uh, outback South Australia also, as well as um, being born in Ballarat. But uh, it's dangerous. It's easy, it's easy to forget it when you're in a city and you're in a bubble that's kind of had progression. We're still not there yet in Sydney and Melbourne, but there is a bit more acceptance and there's a community where you can find that love. But when you go to small, smaller places out there like Madura or Albury, um, even Gympie up in Queensland, you know, um, Bob, Bob Catter says, there's no gay people, and as Josh Thomas says, just go on grinding, you'll find out. Um, but it's going to hurt them, we're going to have casualties. Uh, people who are yet to come to terms with their own sexuality, um, that's the people that we need to be here and stand and say, we are here for you no matter what, and we're going to fight for you. Don't listen to the hate. With the Australian Christian Lobby calling on the federal government to relax state anti-based discrimination laws, that is that just proves they've lost. If you need to discriminate, you've lost. Fight with love like we are doing. I remember at our last rally um, when I was speaking, a heckler came up and he was trying to get into the speaker's faces. Even our deputy mayor of Ballarat, Belinda Coates, was trying to get, she was getting heckled. Um, but our crowd formed a circle around the speakers holding hands and we fought back with love and blocked him out. We didn't fight, fight with violence, we fought with love. And that's all we're asking. If you've got a good case you do not need no relaxation of any anti-discrimination laws just do it with truth love and facts and if you can't do it don't bother of course one of the things we also hear about is the appeasement of religious organizations and religious exemptions how do you feel about such a compromise uh well i don't think that there should be any compromise um the it's hard to say where do you, where do you start saying that people can discriminate when they can't. Um, like, can you get expelled because you're a student at a Catholic school? You can get fired. Like, the exemptions is telling someone, yet again, that they're lesser than someone. You're a second class citizen. Um, and that because if you have faith in something else, that you're better and you don't have to pay taxes or you don't have to, um, or, or you can tell someone that they're a dirty faggot. No, that is not right. And we do, if we say something about Christians, we can be vilified. Uh, that's, that can be, we can be in big trouble because vilification laws protect the Christians and any religion, really. 
Um, but we've got a bit of a lack of vilification laws protections on our community anyway. So when they call for relaxations of any more discrimination laws, it's like, well, we've got bugger all. So um, when it's like this, a lady, Wendy Francis, ran in the Senate in Queensland and she accused Aboriginal uh, gay people that were going to cause another stolen generation. And I tried to take it to the Human Rights Commission, but we have no protection under vilification laws in Victoria. So we couldn't do nothing. Um, now with the Daniel Andrews government, um, I think there's a bit more progression going on in Victoria. We're seeing a bit more, and I don't think that that government wants to see any relaxation of any um, any discrimination laws. And I know for a fact, MP Sharon Knight, for the seat of Wendaroo, she has publicly spoken out against uh, any relaxation of any discrimination laws. And she believes that we have a fair society. Do we have a fair society? I don't know. Um, at the moment, no, we don't. Um, but I like to think we can have, and we could have, but it's just a matter of getting there. But and do you think it will happen? The plebiscite? Oh, I am almost certain it's going to happen, but I hope it doesn't. Um, and if it does happen, I hope that our leaders in our nation will, if there is any funding, that they will look into regional areas and other grassroots organisations and make sure that people are protected across Australia, not just one organisation receiving funding, not just one person speaking out, but making sure everyone has a voice and has a chance to feel safe already, like in the last week since Safe Schools has come up. Um, Lifeline has, has had an increase in calls from LGBTIQ youth, and that's a sign this plebiscite is dangerous and we are going to have casualties and we are going to lose lives. I've advocated for people who have sadly taken their life and I feel like I've failed and we can't fail them. We're their nation. Now we've got to be there behind them. And this is an up and coming generation and it's a big community that we're telling is that they're wrong for who they love. And uh, the plebiscite can't go on. <laughs> Do you think marriage equality, regardless of the plebiscite, is inevitable? Yes. And because we're right. And what do you think the timeline is? Timeline? Um, I'm hoping, if, if we can get some conviction, I'm hoping we'll get it by the end of the year. But I'm definitely hoping in 2017 we'll see marriage equality here in Australia. And if we don't, then we're going to have to up our game some more. And we're getting more organised and everyone's coming together. So we're starting to prepare very well and we're getting very organised. It's just a matter of the fear of what effects it's going to have. Like marriage equality is going to have a snowball effect if it's passed, but the plebiscite is going to have a snowball effect if it goes ahead. What do you say to people to reassure them or combat them when they oppose marriage equality on religious, cultural, traditional grounds? Um, that I would not want to get married in the church. Um, I've been very offended over the years. Um, when, I was in, when I was in high school, I was groomed by a chaplain and I went through Pray the Gay Away therapy. And um, that didn't do nothing for me. And instead I tried to take my own life at 13 for the first time um, because I felt dirty and I felt like I was going to hurt people because I was who I was. And they drew, I remember them drawing this graph of latex and how latex was done for condoms and how there's holes in latex, that's, the holes in latex are big enough, small enough to stop the sperm, wait, but the HIV can still get through. So no matter what, I was going to get HIV and it just made me feel guilt. And they told me not to masturbate. And like when I did, and I thought of boys, I felt guilty um, afterwards and I felt dirty. I felt ashamed of myself. And for that reason alone, I don't want to be married in church. Um, but if there's so many religious organizations who are coming on board with marriage equality anyway, um, that I think we're right. Um, if you don't support marriage equality, I think we're going to stay away from you. There are some people that aren't necessarily anti-marriage equality as such, but they do have concerns that it might stigmatise couples who prefer not to be married. What do you say to them? I say to them that um, if you don't, I don't know if I'll ever get married. I don't fight to, for the right to get married. Oh, I do fight for the right to get married, but not for my own self. I never know. I don't even know what's coming in my future. I'm a single man. Um, and marriage is an institution and the traditional sanctity of marriage, like how many goats am I worth? I don't know, but it's not, we're not 
trying to stigmatize anything onto you. We're just trying to um, break down stigmas and make a safer future for my nieces, my nephews, and your nieces and your nephews, uh, a more accepting one, as we've seen in with the Aboriginal struggle, for example. Um, and that did work. And there's still so much, so much wrong, but people used to believe it was dirty to marry an Aboriginal. They used to believe that Ab Aboriginals were flora and fauna, not people. But just from the government standing up because the people smacked them on the hands and told them, there is a flow on effect. And we've still got a long way to go with the Aboriginal and gay community. And we're gonna have a lot of healing to do as a community, but the flow on effect is not trying to stigmatize you guys but we are just trying to make it better for you. And if you choose not to get married, that's up to you, but the choice should be there. And you've kind of covered some of it then, but finally on this train of thought, what do you say to people who perhaps oppose it or are critical or skeptical of it on the grounds that it's patriarchal or an outdated institution? And in fact, there should be no marriage at all. Um, well then bare marriage, it would be equal. Um, I would be quite happy with that too. Equal love. Equal love. You're because one of the conveners in Ballarat, aren't you? Yes. Um, what yeah. is Equal Love? So Equal Love is an organisation. Um, so our Equal Love Ballarat is, we first started as regional no discretion um, and then we went on to Equal Love. But in Ballarat, we have a bit more of a job to do because it is in regional Australia um, where we advocate on behalf of individuals. Um, but we campaign, it started from Melbourne and it was to campaign for marriage equality um, when to, in 2004 Howard amended the Marriage Act mm -hmm. to make it exclusively between a man and a woman. Um, even if it's, you know, a guinea pig can get married to a dog legally in Australia as long as it's a man and a woman. Like that makes me feel sick that animals have more rights than us. Um, that's, we aren't even second class citizens with six, uh, if that's the case, you know. Um, but. I hope I answered the question. What do you think of the campaign so far supporting marriage equality? Of course, the big one is the Australian Marriage Equality Campaign as Equal Love as well. What advice would you give those campaigns? Uh, unify, work together and come to the table because we have a big challenge ahead of us if this plebiscite goes ahead and we need to work together. Um, this is not an egotistical game. This is about people's loves, people's lives. This is not about popularity. This is not about personal popularity. This is not about personal agendas. This is just about making a better future. Um, come to the table and let's sit down nationally and talk because we really need to get this done. And if we have any division at all, um, we need to mend that because we've got to fight together. Not, not around each other and there is unified um, campaigns but we need to have it more and we need to have more uh, national hookups through Skype, through other things and we need all organisations to come on board because we all play an important part but we need to know what each other is doing properly without reading a press release or doing something, just come and talk. Have you been quite impressed so far though with the campaigns you've seen? Uh, so far, yes. Uh, I think we've made a big difference. We've obviously got the opinion polls up and we've got um, politicians over the line. I remember a member of Ballarat, Opposition uh, Minister for Health, Catherine King. She was originally against equal marriage rights and she changed her mind after the consultation. Um, we've had a lot of MPs come on board and have changed their mind and that's important too. And you can change your mind and you can still be dignified. And it doesn't mean that everything else you've said has, it doesn't devalue anything else. It's just that you're, you're prog progressing. And don't be afraid of, afraid of progressing. Like putting the pedals on and staying where you were is just gonna get you diselected or unnoticed. The Australian Christian Lobby, we hear a lot about the ACL. How dangerous are they? Uh, dangerous in, uh, there are, actually I'm gonna say that they're very dangerous and they could have blood on their hands. Um, and they probably already do. Um, even the Democratic Labor Party, for example, um, putting out pamphlets during the last election um, was very hurtful. And I lost a very good friend of mine just from pamphlet drops because they couldn't deal with themselves. And 
if they realised what they were doing, I wonder if they would. I wonder if that they would continue to be so hurtful um, because they're actually making people consider taking their own lives and living. Um, and when people are considering to take their own lives and living, that's not Christian. Uh, it's dangerous, it's a devil and it's hell and they don't even deserve hell. Do you think they represent the majority of Christians? No. And I know that for, um, I know that for a fact. Um, in Ballarat, I've had lots of people come to me and 40 denominational le religious leaders wrote to the Prime Minister in concern of the plebiscite that it was going to bring the ch their church into their reputation down and it's going to affect the mental health of LGBTI people. I think they're a small minority, a very vocal small minority, and they claim to be a majority, but hello, where are you? Raise your hands and stop living your faceless men. What do you say to people who claim that marriage equality and the campaign for it overshadows other issues such as LGBTQI refugees or trans issues. That's probably exactly why they're stalling. Um, but we are trying to, we, we, we equal love for example, we are with refugees, we stand with them. Uh, um, I remember when Ali Chowdhury was uh, threatened, he was born in Pakistan and um, he was one of the first to get a civil union in Queensland and then they um, outlawed civil unions with Campbell Newman and he's going to be deported to Pakistan regardless of the fact that he grew up in America um, and so we're sending him and going to deport him because his relationship was no longer legally binding um, so we're going to deport him to Pakistan where he didn't even know the dialect he didn't even know the culture and he was going to be persecution so we're going to send him to persecution and we're still we're actually doing that now even with refugees sending them to Fiji as illegal to be gay so do you think then that the marriage equality debate also provides a hook for other issues and perhaps people who were never interested in politics, who've been to their first rounds with marriage equality, get involved with these other issues too? Yes, and if you come to the rallies there, um, you'll see that that's heavily spoken about. Um, and these issues are close to home for us too because equal marriage rights is an umbrella issue and it's going to cover the refugees, it's going to cover the mental health, the stigmatising. Mm -hmm. and. It's not just about equal marriage rights. Like I said, I don't even know if I'm going to get married. All I know is we need a better future and we need a safer future and we need a future where everyone's accepted and can live in society without fear of exclusion. What advice do you give for people who support marriage equality in order to get involved? Um, if you support marriage equality, do write to your politicians. And you know what, because the ACL, uh, like we heard last night at the Safe Schools for, um, Combat Forum that a Greens office, they received so many emails just generated um, just from mobilising um, the ACL, mobilising their my, small minority, but they're very vocal, they're very good at what they do. Um, we need to be good at what we do, we need to be vocal too, and it's not about, um, it's about letting people know that we're here and, we're, and it's not that they're not going to lose their seats, they're not going to lose their votes, because at the end of the game, politics politicians are just afraid they're going to be diselected but let them know that you're supportive and it does make a difference um, if you want to get involved with campaigns do it um, even uploading a small video doing a filter on your profile you don't have to be an activist you don't have to be a lobbyist you can just start conversations at your dinner table teach your children um, and teach your friends you know and if you see something say well hey this is how I believe and this is it, and love is love, like, and it's gonna win because love. How can you hate love? How, how can you hate love? Kobe, thank you very much. Thank you.